All right, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be looking at the next JS framework. It's a framework for the React framework, and it basically makes scaffolding and boilerplate for React way faster and way easier. And it also makes it extremely easy to implement uh, server-side rendering. And so we're gonna get started and just make a really quick, easy to-do list app. And the documentation here for getting started, it says to use the create next app command, which if you've used create react app, it's basically the same exact thing, which I don't like to use. I don't like to start with the extra boilerplate that they provide you with. I like to just start from scratch. So for me, I'm gonna use just the file directory here. And I have this folder for development projects. I'm gonna create a new folder and we're gonna be doing a to-do list app. And then I'm gonna open that folder inside of Visual Studio Code. In here, I open the terminal using control tilde, and I'm gonna uh, initiate a package.json file, which if you've used React, you're familiar with. It's Node Package Manager's way of instructing your project on how to handle dependencies. I'm gonna initiate that file with npm init. If you've used this before, you know it prompts you with a series of questions about your project. You can add this dash y flag to your command, and it just defaults all the answers to answer yes or leave it blank if they don't need an answer so I'll run that now you'll see I have a package.json file here now and it's got some basic instructions for my app you'll see in here the next step is to install our dependencies and then update the scripts tag in package.json so I'll just copy this whole chunk of content and I'll do this first save it close it out now I will install my dependencies and all I need is next react and react dom so i'll say npm i which is shorthand for install dash capital s which is shorthand for save and we'll say next react and react dom and get those installed this is going to take a minute so i'll let that install and then when that's done installing we'll come back and set up the basic project directory for our next project all right so our uh, dependencies have successfully installed and we can check that by looking at our package.json file and in dependencies we have uh, next react and react dom so the next thing we need to do is just set up the basic project structure and if you look at the documentation it tells you that you need a pages directory in your root directory so we'll add that folder pages folder this is the folder that Next.js looks for initially, and it looks inside of that folder for a file that we're gonna create called index.js, and that's where it gets all of its initial content for your application. So at this point, all we have to do is add, uh, if you've used React, just add a stateless functional component like you've always done. We don't need to import anything in Next.js, it just is available for us. So we can just say uh, const index, and create our first component here. And inside of that component, we'll just return a div with a heading tag. We'll do h3 that just says next JS to do list. And then of course, before we're able to get that into the browser, we need to export default that component. So now that we've exported that component, we're gonna use the npm run dev command and in our scripts here, what that does is it runs next, which basically runs your Next.js project in development mode. So it'll do a quick build, and then it'll tell you that your project is available on a local host port 3000, but we'll say npm run dev. And when I do this, when I go to my browser to localhost 3000, when this is done, I should be able to just see this content that I'm rendering here, the Next.js to-do list. So localhost 3000, Next.js to-do list. So that's it. That is server side rendered and your server is all set up with Next.js. Bam, super easy. So everything after this is just, I'm gonna race through it. I'm just going to build a to-do list app just so that you can see everything's wired up. It's easy. The next thing we do is add a little form. And then in that, we'll put an input tag and a button for the user to submit their to-do item. So the, the look of that is pretty basic. So with Next.js, what we have for implementing state into this component is React provides this method called useState. And we have to uh, actually have to import that. We'll destructure React, we'll say uh, useState, import useState from React. And now the way that use state works is that you declare a variable that you want as a state prop inside of an array. So the first element of the array is going to be your variable. And the second element of your array is going to be 
basically a set state function that is specifically applied to that state prop. It sounds a little bit confusing, but if we just declare this variable here and I'm gonna name it uh, user input, it's coming from this input uh, box. So user input, so that's the first element, that's the state prop. So it's a placeholder for that state value. And then the second one is gonna be a set state function for the user input. And by convention, we name it after whatever that state prop is that we just created. So we'll name this one set user input. And then we'll, we'll set the value of that to, uh, what we do here is invoke state, invoke use state, I'm sorry. And then it takes in a default value. I know that this is eventually gonna have a string applied to it. So I'm gonna set the default value to an empty string. And then later on, or right now, we're going to uh, create an on change function to update that string. And we'll do that right now. So we'll create a handle change function. This is all stuff that if you've used React, you're super familiar with this, but I'm doing it for the sake of posterity. And that's gonna take in an event. And we know that if we've used React, if you're doing form input, you're gonna invoke prevent default to the on change of, um, of that form input. So then in here, all we're gonna do is say set user input to whatever the user input into that box, e.target.value. And then I like to log that to the console. So I'll say log user input. That way if I'm logging the state prop to the console every time it's updating, I can get confirmation in the console that my code is actually working and I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> we can save that, or actually before we save it, what I'm gonna do is add an on change to the input box and I'm gonna set it to that handle change function that I just wrote. So now e.target.value is whatever is inside uh, of this input box as the user types. I've saved that. Now if I come into the browser and open up the developer tools window with control shift J, now when I type into this input box, I'm gonna see it inside of this console. That's all working fine. I know that um, I'm taking the user's input and I'm basically extracting it so I can do whatever I want with it in my app here. I don't need to log it to the console anymore, so I'll get rid of that. But what I will do is now I'm gonna create another state prop, which is gonna be an array. And that array is gonna represent our to-do list. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another state prop called to-do list. And then along with that set to-do list, invoke use state. And now I'm gonna pass an empty array to this uh, as the default value because this is not gonna be a string. I'm gonna be adding elements to an array when I reference to-do list. In order to do that, I'm gonna create a function called handle submit. And then whatever the value of user input is, when the user submits, I wanna take that value and add it to the to-do list array. So I'll say set, actually the first thing I'll do is say take in an event because we know that the default behavior of an on click is to refresh the page and we don't want that in a single page app. So again, we're gonna do prevent default. Oh, I didn't invoke it. And then here we're gonna set to do list and then and that we're gonna set it to an array that contains user input. And now here's the thing is that this is gonna have whatever already existed in the array, if anything was already existent in the array, plus whatever was just uh, added to it. To account for that, what I wanna do is display the to-do item um, at the top of the list if it was the most recent to-do item submitted. So I put that into the array first, and then underneath that I add the spread operator and add the to-do list to it. And if there's no value for that yet, then it just doesn't, the to-do, it's an empty array. It's not that it has no value. It's the value is an empty array. So it's just gonna, on, on first invocation, it's gonna have a user input as the first element, and then it's not gonna have any other elements after that. But as we add more items, they're gonna, uh, 
be placed above whatever was added previously. So now we can add that as an on click to our button. Handle submit. Now that the state is going to have a value added to this array from whatever the user input was, I'm going to render that as the user's add to do items. So down here, I'm going to create an unordered list. Inside of that, I'm going to use the curly braces to signify that there's going to be a JavaScript expression. I'm going to take to do list dot length and check to see if it's greater than or equal to one. And I'm gonna use a ternary statement here, or the ternary operator, the question mark saying, if this evaluates to true, if to-do list.length is greater than or equal to one, we wanna map through to-do list. So to-do list.map, and that will have a to-do item and an index as its second argument. So for each one of those, we want to return a list item. And in that list item, we just want to render the to-do, because it's just going to be a string. And then remember when you are mapping through and then rendering something for each time uh, you map through, you need to provide a key. And we'll just make that the index. To complete our ternary statement here, we'll say, if that's not true, then just return this string that says enter a to-do item. So now what should happen is, as I click the submit button, it should add my to-do item to the to-do array and it should actually render in the browser. I can actually just get out of here. So since the to-do uh, list array is empty, I get enter to-do item. Once I submit it, uh, the first item, that goes away. So we'll say wash car. Now it's displaying what I add instead of just saying enter to-do uh, item. Do laundry, create tutorial. Oh, I forgot to delete. Okay, now what we want to do is add a delete button to each of these. So inside of this list item, I'm going to do button and then say delete. This is going to be very ugly, but now each item is going to get rendered with a delete button, but it's not going to do anything. We need to add that functionality. And the way that we're going to do that is we will create a function to handle delete. And that is actually going to take in a to-do item because we're going to actually add, we're going to pass this to-do item to this function. So as each item in this array gets mapped, this will basically become the property that gets passed to the handle delete when that delete button gets clicked for that item. And so what we'll do is say, we're, we're, we're going to filter the array using index of and so we're going to be using array prototype dot filter and then we're going to be using array prototype dot index of and we're going to store that in a value pass that value to set the state again with the new updated array so we'll just say updated r equals and then we'll say to do list dot filter and that's going to take in a to do and then the, this is where we set the criteria for what gets saved in the new array that this returns. So we'll say if to do list dot index of, I should name this something different so it's not confusing because this is a separate argument. We'll call it to do item and this is to do. So as we're filtering through, it'll give us a to do item. So we'll check that if the index of to do item on the to do list array is not equal to to do list dot index of to do which is we're getting from right here so it's whatever we click on we're gonna say if the index of what we just clicked on matches the index of the item that we're mapping over right now do not include it and do not preserve it in the array that this filter returns and then we'll take that entire result and pass it to set to do list just say updated r so now what's going to happen is that when we render this to do list after clicking the delete button it's going to re-render the array based on the criteria that we just gave to the filter method but we still need to add on click 
And remember, we, what we need to do is we need to pass a to do to this function, but we also need to prevent default functionality. Otherwise, the page is going to refresh and then we're going to lose all of our information. So we'll do an inline function that takes in an event. And then we'll do event dot prevent default. And then we'll say handle delete and pass in the to do. So what that should do is now that delete button should be completely functional. So if I click on this, it removes the item. And then when it, the uh, array becomes empty, again, we get this enter to do item. So that works perfectly. Oh, you know, what? I forgot one piece of functionality. I want this input to default to going empty every time somebody submits something. So the way I do that is to set the value of the input box. We'll say value is going to be user input. And then inside of uh, the handle submit, we're going to add set user input to an empty string. So now every time that on submit gets clicked, as it adds an item, it also takes all of the text that was added to this input box and it resets it to an empty string. So we can say wash car and when we hit enter, the text goes away, but it gets added to our to-do list array. So the last thing I'll do just, just because it's common practice for me is add a placeholder. And we'll say, um, we'll just say again, enter a to-do item. So now whenever that input box is empty, we get this placeholder text that says enter to do item. And then when you type into it, that goes away. And again, when you delete and uh, there's no text in the input box, you get enter to do item. I spelled that wrong. But yeah, that's it. This is a basic to-do list app with Next.js. So if you have any questions, I know I was just really speeding through it, but this is kind of for people to just take a look at Next.js in a simplistic way if they already have experience with React. Um, this wasn't really meant for somebody who is a complete beginner and has never used any React tools or anything before. So if you have any other questions or requests for what you would like to learn as far as web development goes, you can leave them in the comments, share with your friends, and enjoy learning. See you guys later.